Now I've been installing fire alarm systems since the late 1900s. And I know what you're thinking to yourself, 19? But that's a long time ago. But anyway, that's over 25 years of me installing, designing, and servicing fire alarm systems in one of the most craziest cities, and that's New York City. I've worked in New York City schools, New York City train stations, where all the rats are, New York City detention centers, animal hospitals, you name it. I've done so many installs around the city, and I've seen so many mistakes that electricians have made while installing, and still, I constantly get calls to fix installs by licensed electricians, technicians who just don't care, and also unlicensed professionals who just got a quick job that they're trying to do on a fire alarm system. So today, I'm gonna go over the eight most common mistakes I see on fire alarm installations so you can avoid them so that way you don't fail inspection, you don't lose time, and ultimately put lives at risk. We are dead serious about what we do, right? So let's jump straight into it. So the first mistake I see is not understanding the filing requirements. It seems as if every project I get, they only concern with the project timeline. When is the building gonna be finished? How quickly are we gonna be able to get the walls up? As soon as I get the fire alarm drawings from their architect, not even from a licensed engineer, they just have a preliminary design that I can base my price upon. I still have to get that over to my engineer, request AutoCAD drawings. This filing process can take up to 10 weeks, most time 12 weeks to actually get the full permit to actually install the fire alarm system. So before we could pull any wire, it's actually 12 to 15 weeks before we could actually do anything. And a lot of times, most contractors, most general contractors do not consider the timeline when it comes to a fire alarm installation. Mistake number two, and this one I see constantly in the field, not using the proper fire alarm cable. No matter where you are, in the state, you have to use power limited fire alarm cables. According to Article 760, the cable rating must be rated at 300 volts. You must have the fire alarm markings on the cables. If it's a power limited fire alarm cable, as if it's a non power limited fire alarm cable, you must use the correct cable gauge. No matter the distance, if you're going to be using 16 or rather 14, you need to know what circuits you're going to be using this cable for. You don't want to intermingle the cables. You don't want to use 14 as supplying power and supply that to a data circuit that will disrupt the whole loop, possibly blow out the CPU. So you don't want to cross your wiring. You want to follow the plans as the engineer had designed the shop drawings. Use the wiring that is designed to be used as on the plans that have been approved by the fire department. You should have no problems using the right cable. I understand that some manufacturers may make a cheaper brand of cable and you're trying to cut some corners and save some money, but buy the right fire alarm cable, charge the right price, so that way the cable actually pays for itself. And mistake number three pisses me off a lot, and that's that's bad wiring. Some electricians out there like to use the four conductor where you have the red, black, the green, and the white, or sometimes the green and the yellow. They sometimes get those confused as if they're wiring up high voltage circuits and they put in systems in series when actually these systems need to be ran in parallel. I've seen so many installs where we have wires come into a junction box and then it's a star topology right after that. One is trying to jump into one room, one is trying to jump into another smoke, one is trying to jump into another. That is not how you wire up a fire alarm system. It is not a series parallel circuit. It is a parallel circuit. Or if you're hooking up a couple of things onto one module, then it could actually be a series circuit. But each wire should be ran in and out to each one of those devices. So when you're coming into a junction box, that junction box should be big enough or you should have the thought pattern of how you should have your boxes for you to run as many cables as you need to go in and out of each of every fire alarm device. And then either you're going to come back to the panel for a class A circuit, or it's gonna be at the end of the line at the last device that you ran that wire on. So it's best that my suggestion, you use one wire for data, one wire for the horns and strobes. If you're using a speaker circuit, make sure if that speaker circuit needs to have a shielded cable, make sure it's one wire for that as well. If so, if you're running four conductor cables, just make sure you pay attention to how you actually gonna run your cables. It is a smart idea, it could be, but if you're not doing your ins and outs correctly, you're messing up the wiring for the system. So 16 for data, 14 for 24, volts, 14 for the horns and strobes. If you're looking to elevate your fire alarm skills, I have a free training. This is my way of giving back to all the technicians. Since when I was coming up, I had nobody to show me how to do it. So for all the newbies that's coming up, that's trying to learn how to get better in fire alarm, there's a free training center for you. Make sure you click the link. And if there's anything specific that you want me to do, leave it in the comments. We could chop it up. I'll let you know if I could do it or not. And I'll do that video so that way I can help you and anybody else that may have that same question. All right? Fire alarm training center, link in the description. Peace. 
mistake number four, improper device spacing. It's important that we install the devices in the exact location that it says on the plans. I know a lot of times when construction go along, there's lights in the way, there may be plumbing, there may be obstacles in the way. It is your job to best place the smoke detector in the most nearest spot that is designed for the plans. You shouldn't have a smoke detector as soon as you walk into the door right there above on the ceiling. It should be centered in the room. And if it's multiple smoke detectors, they should all be spaced with, between each other, spaced from either sides of the wall, so that way it fills up the room with protection the right way. And if you're mounting horn strobes or if you're mounting pull station, AFF means above the finished floor. And I know a lot of times on constructions, when we're walking across these floors, they may not be finished. So it's your job to know what the level of the finished floor is. So when you actually mount these devices, you're mounting pull stations at 48 to 54 inches to the actuator. You're mounting horn strobes 80 inches to 96 inches to the lens, to the actual strobe light. So that way you have proper device mounting. You wanna always make sure you install these devices correctly. You wanna think life safety. And mistake number five, no functional testing after you install the fire alarm system. You may test a few devices, but not the whole entire system. You must verify each and every device working at the fire alarm control panel and also verify that these signals are going to the sentry station. I know sometimes you may install relay and be like, I know it's designed to go off when the system goes into alarm and you can write the program and things like that. But without verifying, we don't just want to know. We know that it will work, but you have to verify, take a video, take a picture so that way you know mentally that this has been done. A lot of times I see when we get to the final inspection, things haven't been tested. The water flows haven't been tested, meaning that the water has not been ran by a physical plumber. The AC hasn't been tested. They know the fire alarm relay will shut off, but they may have it tied to the wrong circuit or they're not properly shutting down the AC system. So when you're testing these things, when you're installing the system, you could determine these faults, fix them, correct them. So when it's time for the inspection, you don't look crazy. You wanna make sure when the fire department comes, your system is 100% tested. You got all the confidence in the world that that smoke detector on the first floor electrical closet is gonna report to the central station saying the first floor electrical closet, and it's gonna be an alarm signal and the fire department is gonna show up. And mistake number six is poor panel termination. We don't wanna wire up the fire on panels sloppy. We want our wires dressed up accordingly, going in 90 degree angles, so that way we can dress our fire alarm panels up neatly. There may be a bunch of wires coming in through different pipes and connectors. It is your job to tighten them up with some tie wraps. There are hooks in the back of the panel, hooks on the side of the panel, so that way you can dress the wires up, strip the wires back accordingly, not too much, just enough to fit under the screw. You don't need no copper hanging out, causing any accidental troubles and alarms or ground force on the system. So you want to be cautious, you want to be neat, and you want to be detailed when you're doing your systems. Take a little pride and make sure you do it right the first time because people come behind you and look and be like, that's some good work right there. And that's what I like to do. And mistake number seven is not having a proper as-built drawing. As you install the fire alarm system, there may have been some changes from the original design. It is your job to report that back to the fire alarm company so they can get their engineers to actually make those adjustments on the plans and also the as-built riser diagram. So when it's time for the final inspection, you will have your riser diagram mounted next to the fire alarm control panel in 11 by 17 frame with a stamp by the engineer and also stamped by the electrician. A secondary copy will be given to the fire department so they can have for their record so they can know the type of system that is actually installed in that building. And mistake number eight, this is the absolute worst. And this is working without a license. I know there are a bunch of unlicensed contractors out there that is putting in fire alarm systems. It may not be in New York City because the rules are a little bit strict. It may be even some project manager or maybe a building manager just trying to get a security guy. Hey, could you just install this smoke detector or run this wire? Or could you just look at this over here? No, you don't need to do none of that. As long if you're not licensed, you should not be touching a fire alarm system. This is a life safety device. And anything that you do as an unlicensed contractor puts yourself in liability is either 10 or $15,000 of a fine that you're gonna have to pay for touching a smoke detector without a license. So hire a licensed contractor that could actually perform the work that you need to do, pay the price that the actual contractor is paying because they are licensed. They are specialized in that position to actually fix that problem. If you was able to do it, then you would be doing it. There will be no licenses. There will be no rules, no regulations. So make sure you hire the proper contractor or the right person for the right job. If you're serious about installing fire alarm systems the right way the first time or trying to get your fire alarm license, getting yourself nice and certified, 
certified or even learn how to start and grow a fire lawn business, click the link in my description to join the fire lawn business blueprint. We have all the tools necessary there to make you either a better fire lawn technician or we're gonna transform you from a tech to a CEO. Join the fire lawn business blueprint today. And if you wanna learn how to read fire lawn drawings like a pro, then watch this next video that's gonna pop on the screen here. So make sure you subscribe so you can transform yourself to a tech to a CEO. Fire lawn expert out, peace.